All right, let's get started. Thanks everyone for joining us today on this Thursday for HTML5 testing with Rebecca Hauk um, and Alan Greenblatt. Welcome you guys. And with that, I'm going Thank to... Thank you very much. Hey. hey, everybody. Uh, this is Alan Greenblatt, Senior Creative Cloud Evangelist at Adobe. Um, welcome all uh, to another edition of Adobe Tech Live. And today we have uh, Rebecca, computer scientist at Adobe. Uh, she's been working for the past 15 years in all different aspects of uh, testing and test methodologies and automation and infrastructure and I'd say just generally delivering high quality software. Um, so uh, now Rebecca, she's a WebKit contributor and she's been contributing to W3C test infrastructures, and she's a test author on several CSS specs, and, and uh, but most importantly, and what we're going to talk about today is uh, she's a key member, uh, basically since inception, of Test the Web Forward, which some of you may or may not have heard about. And you uh, pass it along to Rebecca to tell you all about it, and uh, we'll have the uh, for those of you that have not attended a Tech Live session before, there'll be a uh, there's a regular chat pod for people to just you know have discussions, and then there's a separate Q and A pod. To if you have particular questions for Rebecca, and we'll leave them for the end, and then at the end we'll go through the, uh, the Q and As uh, for Rebecca and have her answer those. And and we are recording this, and so uh, don't worry, everything will be posted on Tech Live and on the Tech Live YouTube channel. So. Without further ado, I bring you Rebecca. Thank you, Alan. Um, good morning or good afternoon to everyone. Uh, that was a very nice introduction. Um, but uh, I do have a slide here about me. Alan already told you about me. I have um, the, the primary reason I'm talking to you today about Test the Web Forward is because I've been heavily involved with Test the Web Forward since the beginning, um, a little over a year ago. Um, as well, um, I've written many W3C tests, uh, so working on the web standards team here at Adobe, um, uh, I'm sharing the knowledge of what I've learned over the last couple of years with the community. Um, so I'm going to start with a quote from Tim Berners-Lee because it's really at the heart of the Tesla Web Forward movement. Hey, uh, I, Rebecca. Yeah. Rebecca, sorry to interrupt you, um, but you need to share your screen again. Oh, it got disconnected. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Um, so he said, if I had taken proprietary control of the web, then it never would have taken off. People only committed their time to it because they knew it was open and shared and that they could help decide what would happen next. Um, so now, uh, tw over 20 years later, the web has indeed evolved um, as he envisioned it, and now the web really truly is defined by community. However, he also knew that this would cause exponential growth with contributions for many millions of people. So in 1994, he founded a standards body called the World Wide Web Consortium, or as you may have heard it referred to, the W3C. He knew that without a common set of standards, the web could and would quickly devolve into fragmented chaos and it would ultimately be unsuccessful. So now standards are the root of communication for, the, for, for growing the web. And since we all come together through communication, standards are what bring us together on the web. So what exactly is a standard? Well, it defines how something should work, plain and simple. Um, it's based in the W3C. It's based on the consensus of the community. A standard uh, should be theoretically possible to implement um, before it's proposed, um, and then it should it should be proven that it can actually be implemented not just once, but more than once. <clears throat> if it can only be implemented one time and not repeated, then it's probably a non an anomaly or not standardizable uh, because of too many variables or something. And in the W3C, the implementations need to pass a common test suite. That's how they prove their conformance to the standard. So how do they come to be? 
uh, it starts, the standard starts with a document that's a draft. A draft is considered a work in progress. There are usually many, many, many updates um, that can span over a year of time. Um, about we are actually using a lot of these and using air quotes prototypes in browsers today because people are so eager to get these technologies into the browser um, they're, they're long uh, they're often long existent in the browser before the stand, the draft standard becomes um, finalized uh, the draft advances on consensus so all the iterations and all the change go through uh, feedback loops of the working groups and the web developers out there and we need tests along the way to prove these concepts, to prove these, these drafts, and to resolve on the details. I've seen many cases where working groups um, will go back and forth on a point of a spec, and ultimately they'll need to, to sketch out some tests that prove um, what the standard is trying to say, and the tests often help the, the, the issue become resolved. So after the draft phase, uh, the, the next phase is it becomes a candidate recommendation, abbreviated as CR in the W3C. This is more firm than a draft. Um, this is when the working group believes the spec has everything that it needs. <clears throat> um, implement, implementations here are needed to validate that belief. So here's when the, the two implementations come into play. We may have one that's been experimental up until this point, but in order to get out of this phase, we need two, at least two. Um, and tests are needed here for these two implementations to validate again and, and be interoper to prove the interoperability and start. And the last phase is the recommendation. This is the final official version. Um, this is when we have the two implementations. Any further downstream um, vendors, browsers, uh, implementers have the test suite to validate, yes, we've, we've implemented this correctly. So this is uh, a coverage report. So Toby Langell of, of Facebook, and he's currently the W3C test lead, and Robin Berjan, the HTML5 spec editor, have been doing some work to create some uh, test coverage data on some of the specs. Um, this is a snapshot of the test coverage report for the HTML, HTML5 spec. And this is just a screenshot, so this was taken uh, several months ago, but, but it's not that much different now. Um, what they've done is they're parsing the language of the spec. So this is not code coverage, where we, we know we're familiar with lots of the code coverage tools. This is parsing the language of the spec and doing some analysis um, using the word count, um, certain word analysis, and if there's a spec written in a certain language that we can extract uh, data from um, web ID. Much more we need to go. And we've done this for every spec, um, but this is the biggest one that most people are most concerned with. So, uh, I don't know if you probably read that. So it's estimated that we need about 25,000 tests um, and that we need more than 15,000 tests to get to final. And beyond that, all of the tests that get submitted to the repository have to be reviewed by someone. Um, and that queue is pretty long. Right now there's about 6,000 tests needing review. So those are some pretty giant numbers, um, and W3C and many of the working groups and, and many people involved in this effort are you know, kind of wondering, how, how are we going to get there? Um, it, it seems like it might be an enormous mountain to climb. Um, so the answer is pretty simple. We need more people, we need more tests, and we'll make a better web. So a little over a year ago, uh, my colleagues and I uh, started a movement um, called Test the Web Forward. We had our first event here in San Francisco at our office in June of 2012. Uh, we've had a number of events since then in uh, Beijing, Paris, Sydney, Seattle, and our most recent one was in Tokyo uh, in June. 
We have two more uh, we're planning right now in Shanghai, uh, actually in a couple of weeks, and Shenzhen, uh, China, later near TPAC, uh, the, the annual W3C conference. Um, we haven't done this alone. We've done this with partnerships from Google, Microsoft, Facebook, um, and more other sponsors and partners. And we've got a lot more coming soon. Um, we've got, uh, there's a study that I can't, there's U.S. cities that are in the works right now that um, as soon as there's something somewhat sure, we'll put on our website. So what are these events? I'll get into the details of what, what actually happens at these events. Uh, there's an educational aspect about it. We teach you uh, first kind of how, how you become a contributor, how you contribute, how do you write a test, how do you read a spec. Um, we have experts that come and do presentations. So these are some of the experts we've had at past events. Um, that uh, They're typically spec editors or people who are heavily, heavily involved in working groups and in test writing. Um, these are just some of the examples of the things we teach you. There's a, a JavaScript testing framework that we, we walk everyone through. Uh, ref tests are a certain example. Um, that uh, it's a certain type of test that the W3C likes, and I'll walk you through a brief excerpt of, of what that is. Um, this is actually the presentation that we give on how to give how to write a REST test. The full this is just an excerpt of the tutorial that we give at the at the event, but the full um, tutorial is on the website. So REST test is something that uh, you need to use to test something that that. How, when you need to test something, how it renders visually. In other words, you can't use JavaScript to programmatically verify the output. You need to, you need to verify how it looks on the page. And it consists of two files, a test file and a reference file. Test file is one that uses the feature you're testing. So let's say you're testing the uh, CSS border property. Your test file would contain some kind of element that applies the border property to it. Ref test, reference file is the will render exactly the same, but not using the border properties. Um, there are many creative ways you can create a parallel or, or um, equivalent rendering using ref tests. Uh, ref tests should be self-describing so that there's a sentence on the page that tells you how the test should look when it passes. Uh, this is more for the manual case, and it's very helpful when you're debugging tests when there's something that tells you what you should expect when it passes. Uh, and it should be cross-browser and the cross-browser and cross-platform. So how these are worked by most of the browser vendors is they automate the ref tests running by loading them each in a browser, taking a screenshot, and doing an image comparison. And that's why these are ideal, and that's why they're cross-browser cross-platform. Any any pixel differences across Windows and Mac or Linux um, don't, don't matter because you're you're generating the screenshots from the same source. So the next thing we do, oops, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through a sample test case. Uh, this is a basic test case for the CSS transform um, spec. Uh, it's the transform property. This is actually a screenshot taken right from the spec um, that shows uh, moving an element 100 pixels in both the x and y direction. And sometimes writing tests is good to start with the examples because you get a nice little diagram like this and you can sort of visually see how the feature is supposed to work. Uh, before I take you into the code, this is what a completed REST test looks like, and it's um, not very exciting. It's two files that look exactly the same, but that's what we want. Um, inside the code, uh, the WNRC likes some test metadata, and this is to help us track um, what, what kind of tests we have. That coverage report that I showed you earlier somewhat derives somewhat from this. This is how we know what sections of the spec we're testing. Um, it'll include your name. It'll include the sections of the spec you're testing. Um, and then the, the match link is the reference file. It just says this test matches this reference file. Um, and then there's an assertion, a statement that says what, what, you, so what the test is actually testing. Um, here is the test case. Uh, the transform property is the word of trans we're using the translate function. function. And in the reference file, we'll create the exact same um, rendering, but rather than use the tra transform function to place the div at those, that location, we'll just set the top and left. Um, this is a technique we use in reference files where we add an element that's only visible when the test fails, and we like to use red and green. So we'll make a red uh, div on the page that if the transform doesn't succeed, um, you'll see red. 
and then this is this this is a simple sentence that tells you how the page is supposed to look when the if the test passes. Um, you add the elements to the file, and here the important part is we put the uh, red square prior to the green square in the DOM. You could also set the index exposed to the simplest. And the reference file just simply has your green square. And so this is what a failing test looks like. On the bottom example, the transform wasn't applied. Um, so you can see the, the green square did not move over the red square. And it's very easy whether you're running this test manually or, or they're being um, compared programmatically to tell that this is a failing test. That's a basic quick walkthrough of a rep test. Um, at the event, then we usually spend about a day hacking. Um, and we have written tests for many specs. Um, HTML5 is a big one. A handful of the CSS specs transforms backgrounds and borders, values, and units. At the Tokyo event, we um, had some Flexbox tests. And that attendees there were particularly interested in, in text fonts and writing modes. Um, so those were some interesting tests. Um, at the Seattle event, a nice team came forward and wrote a bunch of tests for pointer events. Um, and, and the list goes on. And we're open to any specs being highlighted. It sort of depends on the experts we get to come and support attendees there. Um, it depends on what specs need them the most um, and what the interest is you know, locally. So all of these events, the people are contributing. We've written over 2,000 new tests in the last year. Um, every single event, it's no surprise, we find interoperability bugs. Uh, we had a great one in Seattle where uh, a, a, a guy wrote a test that um, no, every browser was doing it different and no browser was doing it right, um, which was great. Um, we find spec bugs. Specs are also uh, open, to, open to scrutiny at these things, and that's part of the process. Um, they go through so many iterations, it's very easy for a spec to become um, nonsensical or impossible to implement, or even if it's a small thing like typos, um, these are good exercises for people who look really closely at the text, and there's bug databases for them as well. Um, I've seen people have come forward with their existing test suites and convert them to contribute them to the, to the uh, W3C uh, phone gap uh, in, at the Paris event. Um, they, com they, they converted a suite of phone gap tests and contributed them. Um, and other people have come forward, and uh, uh, Mozilla converted a bunch of their Flexbox tests. Um, we've also seen some side, side projects hacking on test infrastructure. We have, like I mentioned before, we have the test harness JS, which is a JavaScript testing framework. I've seen people uh, enhancing and bug fixing on that. Um, there's more test infrastructure work in, in, in progress right now, so I expect to see test report events using, using time there to collaborate. Um, at every event, we produce more tutorials and more documentation. We've had so many good speakers and experts come forward and provide materials. We're, we're really accumulating a nice, um, rich uh, set of documentation and information for people wanting to get started. And we're building a community. Um, I think the, the events are super fun. Um, people get to network. The attendees, uh, one of the one of the most popular aspects of the events is the attendees, particularly people like in these other countries, they get to meet the editors of the spec. We get to sit there you know, for a day and, and work with you know, Santa Sialica, who, who's an editor on many CSS specs. Um, and for some people, you know, if they're not in the Silicon Valley or they're not in the Bay Area, this is, this is very attractive. And I think it extends after the event, because when you've worked with somebody in person, you, you feel more comfortable sort of reaching out to them and, and communicating with them online afterwards. And so we feel like we're really building a better web. This crowdsourcing thing is catching on, and people are really excited, and the enthusiasm is very high uh, for us to look forward and for what we're doing. So we're always asking other people to join the movement. Come to an event. Um, there's lots of sponsorship opportunities, um, partnerships. If you're, if you're in, a, in an area where you think uh, you, know, you have a community group or an area where you think Tesla Web Forward would, would uh, be well suited, talk to us. We can, we can talk about getting a, even, it doesn't have to be a big hackathon. It can be a one easy meetup. Um, write tests. I mean, we, like I said, we have a lot of information there now um, as, we, as a result of all these events. And we're also building up some more formal documentation that should go live soon. Um, 
you, you don't have to come to an event. You can get going now. There's information, but you can certainly reach out to the Tesla Web Forum community. Our mail list is big um, with hundreds of attendees um, and reach out. <clears throat> That's it. So our main website is teslawebforward.org. Uh, we have a public uh, W3C mail list uh, that I encourage you to subscribe to. Um, we just started a monthly newsletter series there, so you can stay up with when, when events are coming in the area. Um, there's our Twitter information, and my name is Rebecca Houck. And that's it. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Rebecca. So uh, that, was, that was excellent. That was excellent. Uh, I'm going to switch this over. Um, I'm going to see if I can paste this into the chat pod so I can see the meeting room out. That's okay. Hey, that was really dumb. First thing I did is I accidentally just cleared the Q and A pod. Oh no! <laughs> hey, so well, the I totally apologize, everyone. That was really dumb. Um, <laughs> but, uh, as I was looking at the uh, the Q and A pod there, um, <laughs> I can't believe I did that. Uh, I think one of the main uh, questions I saw there was uh, people asking about Adobe's involvement in the W3C and um, you know how many people we have involved and, and do we have people oh. involved with the That's a good question. Yeah, we yeah we have lots of people involved, um, and, and we actually have for for many years. You know, uh, I, I've been working on the web standards team at Adobe for uh, a couple of years, um, and it's a relatively young team, but prior to that, uh, we've had people working with the W3C since the very beginning, Adobe's been a member. Um, recently, though, since we've got this bustling web platform um, division now, uh, we've our, our membership has grown a lot. Uh, I, on my team, personally, I'm working with mm, four or five, six people working actively in the CSS working group. Um, but yeah, still the still answer to it right there. It's about 60 people company-wide. Excellent, excellent. So um, now I, I think you mentioned this at the beginning uh, when you were talking about the schedule. When, when is the next um, Tesla Web event in the U.S.? Do you know? Um, so there's a, a couple of um, ones in the, that we've just started early conversations with that I'm not, I, I can't put on a website anywhere, but I can mention Boston and um, <clears throat> D.C. Uh, we're also doing a meetup uh, in Sacramento um, in September. Um, that won't be a hackathon. It'll probably more be more like an information session, what I, what I just did here. Um, but to get the Sacramento HTML5 user group um, engaged and on board with the movement. And we, we may see if, if there's interest there then afterwards to do a, a hackathon with them. Um, so those are, those are the things that are being discussed. The Sacramento one is for sure. The, the Boston and the um, D.C. are just an early discussion. But if anyone is on the line that is interested in participating in one of those, um, please, please do reach out to us. Okay. Someone's asking what the Twitter handle is. I think yeah. Let me, can I, I was going to paste that right here. And that was a good place to paste that in the room. Uh, just so put it in the right pod. Type it right in the Q and A box. Okay, yeah, let's hopefully this paste is okay. No, oh, that didn't paste very well. Sorry. Uh, but it's at test uh, web forward. Is that it? Oh, F W D. No, no, it's spelled out. <laughs> Race mine. Oh. No, it's spelled out. I'm sorry. Okay. All right, so ignore mine. I'm doing a wonderful job here. So ignore mine. Oh, are you sure on mine is correct? I'm just looking yeah, on. Right. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking on Twitter, and it's I'm just copy pasting from Twitter, and I've got. Oh really? Okay. Sorry about that. Then I had a typo on my slide. Uh, the last one is correct. Sorry. For the confusion, everybody, it is at test the web FWD. Thank you, Sylvia. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that's always I, I've always wondered about is, you know, I'm, I'm actually based in Boston, and there, 
you know, events in there have been events in Seattle and uh, you know, um, was it Tokyo? I think it was. Uh, mm -hmm. So, what what can I do from you know, from like how can I contribute or how can someone contribute if there's not an event in your city? And uh, you know, so I can't attend an event right now, or maybe there won't be an event anywhere near me for another year or so. But what can I? Is there anything I can do in the interim? Yeah. So, so we are, like I mentioned, we we have we have uh, some formalized documentation right now. The website has a, a, a good number of resources. At the very bottom of the main testbook4.org page, um, there's there's a resources section. Um, that has copies of all of the educational, all the how to write a REST test, how to write a JavaScript test, how to read a spec. There's, there's information for all of that. Um, in conjunction, the W3C, we're working with Toby Langell and the W3C to have uh, sort of centralized W3C testing documentation center, um, and it's going to be served off of testthewebforward.org. Um, it will be going live very soon in the next couple of weeks. Um, and it's all of the information you have there, plus we've had a, a, a lot of people contributing and writing more stuff. So, so all the information to get you started is there to do sort of a self you know, train, training. Um, but certainly, I would encourage you to reach out to the community. I mean, the, the, the public test web board mailing list, like I said, has many, many past attendees. Um, and part of this movement is to build that community. I think it, it only gets stronger when we're working together and helping each other. There are channels in the W3C that uh, working group members are on all the time. Um, there's always someone all around the clock, 24 hours, because they're all over the world, available to answer questions. Um, and even if, even if it's something that's already documented out there, we're happy to point you in the right direction. Excellent, excellent. So now, Let's say, well, it sounds like there's talk of a web event coming. But let's say there wasn't. Is there anything I can do to say, hey, you know, I think there's enough of a community I'd, I'd like, I'd love it if there was a my town. Yeah. So we, we've, we've also developed a, a, a kit to help people. If, if say you are run a, a user group or you're, you know, engage with a community that you think could, could be interested in, in attending a W3 serving a customer board event, we have um, an event kit, well, actually two. We have a meetup kit, something if you wanted to plan something small one evening. And we also have a full plan on how you do a two-day event like we've done in the past, where there's the educational part and then the full day hacking. Um, certainly, uh, and, and, and in fact, the two cities that I mentioned, Boston and DC, are actually coming from non-Adobe or other people that are interested in putting on their, on their phones. Um, in Seattle, as a matter of fact, Microsoft did that without us. Um, we helped a little bit, but they, they pretty much drove that. Uh, so and also in yeah, the bottom that, of the web page. Sorry, I was just saying that's a pretty key issue. This is not just an Adobe event. This is a web event. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's we had the first one here, and we started it, but we really, we really want this to be a full community, uh, not just the attendees, but the, the leaders on the, on the, you know, Adobe and, and Google and Microsoft have been our great friends in this and have helped us a lot. We actually co-organized the Tokyo event with Google, and we held it at their office in Tokyo. Um, but we're right. looking for more people to come on and post. So in the resources section at the bottom of the website, there is a meetup kit um, link that has uh, links off to if you want to, you know, read to kind of just what it, we, we sort of just wrote down everything we learned along the way on doing the big event. Um, and we are available to help you, you know, help consult with you and get you going and answer questions along the way. All right. So there was there was a question from uh, Vikrant. Uh, basically, wants to understand how, you know if there's um, mobile browser coverage for these tests and how that works. Well, so there we so we're we're not exactly. <laughs> I'm careful how I say this. We aren't exactly testing specific browsers. We're testing W3C specs. So any mobile browser that implements any part of those specs would, yes, then be covered. Um, I mean, uh, it, we have not had yet had a, a mobile-focused event, like say, where we pull together all the, all the specs that most impact mobile uh, browsers. But that would be a really cool one that I think a lot of people would be interested in. So, so if, if the mobile browser implements any part of the, the spec we're testing, then, then yes. Okay. 
Big class, does that uh, answer your question? Cool. So um, I guess the last thing is, uh, you know, I was thinking is, what if I have a bunch of tests that I, you know, I have a bunch of tests. Is there a way I could contribute them? And, like a whole a nice yeah. Piece? Yeah, so, so this is a good issue because um, we've had some small test suites contributed, like like uh, PhoneGap test suite was relatively small compared to, say, WebKit test suite or um, Mozilla's test suite. Uh, but converting your tests to the format that W3C um, wants is, is an exercise that may be worth doing. Um, if, if, if it's too technically complicated, Toby Langell has said a number of times, He's open to um, ideas or, or hearing about, you know, maybe maybe the WWC should, should expand their JavaScript test framework support to I don't know, some other popular frameworks out there like Jasmine or something. Um, so, so yes, if you, I, I mean, a lot of shops have their own test suites to validate their implementations. We know they exist. In fact, as we've talked about this a lot, getting all of those contributed to the W3C so that we're all sharing each other's test suites would be a, a, a really excellent thing. And, and maybe even a better path to pursue than writing whole new tests just to conform to this first one um, format. Okay, cool. Uh, so, I mean, that's that's the questions I had. If people, if you have questions for Rebecca while we're here, please uh, enter them in the chat pod, uh, the Q and A pod, ideally. Um, you know, we'll stick around for a bit. But Rebecca, thank you so much. This is this is really informational and informative, and uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to talk here, and well, you know. And one of the things, me. absolutely. Um, now, for those of you on the line, we're also you know you know if there's enough interest, we're um, one of the things we would be you know would be considered we'd consider doing is you know some follow-on tech life presentations where um, you know maybe we'll actually figure out a way to do a test the web event in a tech live session, or uh, if there's more. You know, people want to actually understand how to write tests in detail. You know, we can, uh, any ideas people have? We have some different ideas, but if there's enough interest interest in doing this, uh, please let us know. Uh, let us know here, or tweet, or put on the Facebook page. Because um, uh, uh, if there's enough interest, absolutely, we'll do that. And I, I think it's it's uh, there's a lot of interesting potential there. You know, not having to have full events uh, all over the world, but be able to just do it here online. Potential for that. Yeah, yeah. We have not yet done a virtual event, but um, our, our we are having some remote and virtual participation at some of the events. The last two events, we've had people log on from their respective time zones in Europe or Asia and review tests. Uh, but we would like to try to do a full virtual where we do the tutorial with you online, and maybe we hack together and sit in a chat room and sort of. Uh, share share our testing experiences there. Excellent. I think uh, yeah, Sarah's uh, and that she'd like to get her uh, more hands-on test examples so that she can start doing tests on her applications. We'd like to see a tech session on that. Does that make sense, or more hand? Say that again. Well, I'm just reading. Uh, so Sarah said, uh, "I'd like to get more hands-on test examples, so that I can start doing tests on my application." Ah. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, it, I, I'm assuming you mean sort of sample tests, um, like like you know, our tests are basically HTML files. So you load them in a browser and you run the test, um, but and and. Uh, if you want hands-on test examples, I would actually recommend that you just check out the W3C test repository itself um, and browse through um, the test. And start small. Start with one area. Start with a simple one like you know CSS backgrounds or something. Um, and uh, running them in an automated way is a different conversation, though. And, and there's going to be more information available soon on how anybody can just pull them down and run them automated. Right, right. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and there is uh, this is 
time. Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, it um, would come down to, or is it a particular spec related to that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're probably going to want to test media queries and 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 certain certain things like that. Um, at the spec level, you're testing the pieces of the spec, but sometimes the more interesting tests are when you sort of integrate, um, you know, two specs. And and we do have a number of those kinds of tests in the repository where you know we're testing media queries with um, a certain kind of layout, maybe a, a flex box or something like that. Um, but but it, again, I I, I want to emphasize that these are focused on the specs themselves. Um, so you have to extract what are the what are the W3C specs that are behind the responsive design feature. Right. So then there's another repository too. Do you know where the the there's two CSS is separate? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for that. Excellent. Uh, Okay, I'm just looking at some of the chat, let people get on with that. Um, yeah, so we'll, you know, we'll stick around for uh, another uh, five minutes or so. So I'm going to move this here. You can continue asking questions. But I appreciate if people can just um, fill out the final polls. I hope you all appreciated this. I hope this was uh, inf informative and I hope you enjoyed it. And please do come back to uh, further Adobe Tech Live events and spread the word, get more people coming to these, and, and let us know if you have other ideas for things you'd like to hear talks and discussions on. And uh, well, thank you very much. And thank you especially. Yeah, and so, uh, yeah, feel free to follow up with me directly if you um, have any other questions, or if I imagine if you look at start looking at tests and actually want to get your hands on something, more questions will arrive. I'm happy to answer them for you, or try to redirect you to the best person who can. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Flora. <laughs> uh, excellent. Uh, one last, Kevin is asking, what are official ways to test things related to W3 specs on touch-based interactions people would want to have with their browser? Um, you, uh, is the question, how do you execute the test or write well, the test? Uh, touch-based interactions. How would uh, um, I'm not sure I entirely under the uh, understand the question. Um, uh, the de the touch-based interactions, however, they're defined in the specs. Um, I mean, I'm not sure that I understand the question. Yeah, I, I guess that's one of the things that maybe is confusing is that. Oh, 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 yeah. Without uh, fingers. Yeah, so this is an execution Rebecca, question. Are you, are you able to see the Q and A pod, Rebecca? Yeah, yeah, I am. This is this is in how how we execute the test question. That's what I thought it was. Um, yeah, so this this is. The WCC right now um, has a spec for something called WebDriver, which is an automated browser testing framework um, that it's actually Selenium. It's, it's, just, it's already kind of out there with Selenium, but they're standardizing it so that it can be implemented everywhere the same way. Um, I have not been following the details of the WebDriver progress that much, but I'm almost certain they're acknowledging this case. So. Um, I would encourage you to actually look at Selenium um, and read the WebDriver spec and reach out to those folks. Uh, I, I would, would bet there's a lot of conversation about this. And at some point, the W3C is going to adopt WebDriver and provide a way for people to run these tests automated um, and, and sort of a hosted environment. 
so there, there might be your answer, but I don't think there's anything we're seeing today for that. Uh, and, um, oh, Arturo was uh, asking if we could just post uh, more of the recordings to YouTube. So, um, yeah, sorry, some of those uh, have taken a little while to get up onto YouTube, some of the past recordings. Uh, everything should be on the archives of Adobe Tech Live, um, but uh, it takes a little longer to get it up onto YouTube. But we'll, we'll do our best to get everything up there, including, including this one. Uh, as soon as it's uh, finished, we'll get it up onto the Adobe Tech Live archives, and then we'll post it up on YouTube. So. Well, thanks for um, thanks for your good questions and for your interest. And again, feel free to reach out to me directly. Um, if you've taken a look at some of the tests or looked through some of the materials and have more questions. Excellent. All right, I think we are just about done here. There's a few more people potentially asking questions. Trying to type some things. No. Give you all 30 seconds. All right, I think we're uh, I think we're good. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Rebecca. We'll talk to you all soon. Thank you. Thank you.